Okay, uh, we already discussed the truncation error in finite difference. So the truncation error is how much error we are making in approximating all the differential operators in the equation. So in our previous case, we did two equations is equal to kappa times partial square u partial x square and the truncation error because we are not approximating the time derivative term we're just treating it as a, as a OD we are only converting from PD to OD the truncation error in that process of conversion is defined as ui plus 1 plus ui minus 1 minus 2ui divided by delta x minus uh, we also have a kappa minus partial square u partial x square right that's the truncation error so this is the error in approximating the PDE it is not the error in the solution what do I mean by the error in the solution the error in the solution is the difference, as I call it E. That's the error in the solution. Is the difference between the ui you get minus u at i delta x analytic. The word analytic is used a lot because when we compare a numerical solution with an analytic solution, for example, the straight line we know at the end of the evolution, we use U analytic as the real solution, the actual solution, the exact solution. So some people also use exact here. And in your project, you also are gonna derive an analytic solution before you even start coding. But in a lot of cases, there is no analytic solutions to start with so we may also think of that as a exact solution some solution that you can't really derive but it's still there is the exact solution of the partial differential equation so now the solution error is what's the difference between the numerical solution and the exact solution and this is different from the truncation error it can be quite different okay and it is different because of this so if you solve if you solve the equation in two ways right if you write down the differential equation for the analytic one this is actually let me just write it as a this is the equation satisfied by the analytic solution and the actual numerical solution satisfies a different equation it satisfies let me call use hat to, to denote the numerical solution uh, to distinguish from the analytical solution is equal to kappa times the finite difference operator or the discretized operator so this is the equation satisfied by these two different equations okay now if you subtract the right hand side equation from the left hand side equation what do you get if you do that subtraction what you get is the left hand side is the derivative of u hat minus the derivative of u analytic or if you collect this derivative it's actually partial e partial t right okay and that now the right hand side is different by kappa times ui plus one hat plus ui minus one hat minus two ui hat 
divided by uh, delta x square minus partial square u a partial x square. Okay, so this term, is it the truncation error? Is it? So can somebody see the difference between the right-hand side of this equation and the truncation error? So if the right hand side is just the truncation error, that's great. Because I know that if the truncation error, first of all, is small, then the solution error just grows by a rate that is defined by the truncation error, right? So if the truncation error is going to be bounded, for example, by 10 to the minus 5, then my solution error is going to be bounded by 10 to the minus 5 times t which as long as t is not huge, I'm happy. But unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. If you look at the right-hand side, what's the difference between this and tau? Is this equal to tau? Yes? Well, there's a ua there instead of just u. Exactly. There is a ua here instead of u. The truncation error is defined by plugging the same u, the same solution, to two different operators, one analytic, one numeric. While the right-hand side of this error equation is by plugging two different solutions into two different operators. It's plugging the numerical solution to the numerical operator and the analytic solution into the analytical operator. Okay, so there is one step between these and tau and that is the step that can messes up a lot of things if you are not careful and that's what makes things like stability very important so that step is the following first of all i want to look at i want to basically make the truncation error i, I want to construct i want to manufacture a truncation error in this so what i'm going to do is I'm going to minus a ui plus 1 analytic oh, plus, sorry, plus ui minus 1 analytic minus 2 ui analytic here. This is manufactured. Then plus the same thing. I'm subtracting and adding the same thing, which is basically doing nothing, making the equation still hold. Right? You see what I'm doing here? I'm subtracting this term and I'm adding the same term into the equation. All right. So now where is the truncation error? Do we see something that is actually equal to the truncation error here? The second line, right? This is now plugging the same analytical solution, both are UA, into two different operators. So this is the truncation error. But we also have a first term. We also have a first term that is actually plugging in two different solutions into the same discrete operator. And these two different solutions, the difference between them is actually E. This U hat minus U A is actually E. So the time evolution of the error has two terms. One term is the truncation error. Another term is plugging in the error itself into the discrete operator. And the first term is why stability of the discrete operator is very important. Because if the operator is not stable, that means even a very slight truncation error is going to be exponentially amplified 
by the discrete operator and your whole solution error becomes huge. Your solution becomes garbage. All right, we are gonna continue discussing that next lecture.